Hey all, Brie from the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I have got a gift for you this holiday season. If you love the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I mean love the No Guilt Mom podcast, then tell us about it. Leave us a review and you can be entered to win a No Guilt Mom gift card. All you have to do is leave a review, take a screenshot, and then simply go to noguiltmom.com forward slash review to enter our giveaway for a free No Guilt Mom gift card. Simply for telling us what you think about the podcast. It is amazing. But don't delay. Get right on this as we're going to be giving away that No Guilt Mom gift card on December 21st. So get right on over and visit noguiltmom.com forward slash review. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom podcast. I am your host, Joanne Crone, joined here by the lovely Brie Tucker. Why, hello, hello, everybody. How are you? It is a, a chilly morning here in Phoenix. It is. It is chilly. And I know you East Coasters, you're probably listening to us and being like, what are they talking about? Like 50 degrees. Come on, Arizonans. Oh. Like, well, okay. So here's <laughs> my thick rule. Skin, thicker skin. Exactly. Yeah. We do. Well, I kind of do need to. Like, I will say I've, I've definitely lost my Midwest street cred. I don't. I mean, yeah. I used to have school canceled because there was so much ice you couldn't open the front door. So I have lost that street cred for sure. But I'm down here right now with a sweatshirt on, a hoodie over that, a fleece blanket around me, slipper socks, and I finally did the unthinkable. I turned on my heat because I can't feel my fingers. That is the key. (laughs) That, oh, you turned on, you turned on your heat or you turned off your heat? I turned on my heat. I did the unthinkable. Like I didn't want to turn on my heat this early in December, but my rule is once the house drops below 70 and it's actually in the 60s, I'll, st- I'll turn the heat on. You got to do it. I'll turn the heat you gotta on. You got to do it. <laughs> it's funny because we're at like the kind of in-between time where mm-hmm. it's like not heat all the time. Right. But actually, I think we hit it where we don't need air conditioning much anymore. I mean, we're, we're kind of chilly for December right now, but it smells like burning. It does. That, <laughs> but yeah, that's part of the reason it hasn't been used. I'm got, I'm 50 bucks says by the end of the day, I'm going to have a sinus headache. And I'm going to be like, why is my head hurt so bad? Oh, it burnt off a whole year's worth of. It smells like burning. And we know at this time of year, like it's really hard dealing with the temperature change and then dealing with all of like the end of the year stuff, as well as the holidays and with work as well, because constantly trying to balance how we are doing at home versus how we're doing it at work, which let me say, I don't think men deal with the same issue. They do not. I don't, I, I've got to, I know that sounds, it sounds really like you versus me, like us versus them, but it really isn't the same expectations. It really isn't. Yeah. It's more of our social programming. Yes. Like I always have to say like, you know, the part in the Barbie movie where America Ferrara's character is taking like all of the Barbies in the van and deprogramming them and like telling them how it really is. And once they realize like, okay, you are in a system where you can never win. They're like, oh, I'm out of it. I don't want to be like a foot rubber anymore. And I think that's really it because we are in a system we can never win. Like this whole concept of the patriarchy, it's a real thing. Yeah, It's a real thing. And it's where men do not have the same expectations put on them as women do. And for us to be socially accepted by our peers, by larger society, by our parents, by the older generation, Mm -hmm. you have to fit in this little box. And when you realize that you're like, well, screw that. Here we go. We are going to take it out right now. So that's what we're going to talk about today on the podcast. This managing this overcommitment that's caused by all these expectations that we have on us, both at work and at home. And let's get on with the show. You want mom life to be easier. That's our goal too. Our mission is to raise more self-sufficient and independent kids, and we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to help you delegate and step back. Each episode, we'll tackle strategies for positive discipline, making our kids more responsible and making our lives better in the process. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. So we're not saying that we think that every single situation 
that it is men versus women and that women always get the short end of the stick. There are exceptions, but those are typically the exceptions and not the norm. In general, our female role in our family is that it is our job to work, to bring in some kind of income into the household, right? Take care of the family, which includes like the main bulk of the childbearing and and raising our children, taking care of the home, cooking, cleaning, cooking. I said cooking twice. Cooking, cleaning, shopping. That's, I mean, it's a lot of cooking. <laughs> it is. And then when you add in the yeah. holidays, I mean, uh, my husband is is super proactive in everything, but I can guarantee you, I'm the one that has to do all the shopping for all of our kids. I'm going to be the one that has to do that and do all the shopping for, for any gifts that go from our family to my family. Like all of that is on me. Find the, do we have enough wrapping paper? Do we have enough tags? Do we have enough bows? When does it have to be done so that it's ready to go when we have our next family, when we have the family get together? Yeah. I want to gently push back on you against this because I think that what you said, like, it's totally right. These are the expectations that are on women versus what are on men. But I think that knowing these expectations and then being able to communicate those expectations to your partner is the first step in really alleviating all of this overcommitment. Yes. Because I mean, I talk a lot about my Christmas breakdown. And if you're on the No Guilt Mom newsletter, which you totally should be, go to balanceformoms.com. There's a link That's in the show notes. mental note for you, <laughs> podcast listeners. Yes. I talk about my Christmas breakdown and how the day after Christmas, I was just sobbing on the couch because it was one of those Decembers that just leached everything out of me. Like I was doing all the decision-making and buying the presents and getting the wrapping paper and making the meals and coordinating all the holiday activities. And I just felt like an empty shell of a person where no one even appreciated what I did. And like everybody else had this wonderful holiday. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, it sucked. It's, it was horrible, but it has changed dramatically from that five years ago. I mean, this year, my husband, last year, he was in charge of buying all the kids presents. And that means everything. He gets their wish lists. He coordinates wrapping. Like if he needs my help with wrapping, he will ask me if I can help him. And he does all of that. And he does such a good job. Like the kids would much rather have him buy their presents than me. I make them sensible and reasonable. And he's like, (laughs) oh, you want this? Totally. That looks cool. And it's fun. And they need that. They need the fun. Well, and I will say like, you're right. Like it's, I was going to say like, I guess it'd be like somewhat unfair. Normally we'll sit down and we'll do the wrapping together. And my husband will take over the bulk of it because God bless his very, very neat persona. Engineering soul. (laughs) Yeah. He's not an engineer either, but he has that mentality. (laughs) He was, and then he left that field. But yeah, like he he straightens the edges perfectly, like the bow and everything. And he even did ask me if we could get wrapping paper that matched our tree this year. So we even (gasps) coordinated wrapping paper to our tree. So he is, he's begging for that. Yes. He's stepping forward, but you're right. You can't ask for help. Or get out of the place where you feel like, and I, the way I describe it is where I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I just keep, I keep trying to get my head above water and I keep getting pushed down. So you can't get any help from that if you don't recognize all the things that you are doing. And like you just said that you're the one who has the power to move forward with that. Exactly. are things you can do. You do do have a power to change it. Yeah. It takes a little bit of time, but you can do it. We can, we can help you. (laughs) It does. It does take a little bit of time. It took me like five years to get to the place I am right now, because one of the things is when you start first start talking about it, it isn't a magical switch that just goes, boop. okay, everything's better now. Like I wish it was. It is one of those things you bring it up and then you make a little plan and then you try that plan and that plan doesn't work and there's flaws in that. And then you try again and you keep talking and you keep talking and you keep like, and it's a back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. So that you do see the improvement over time with it, but it's also a lot to do with you out there because there is stuff that you right now are saying yes to that could be taken off of your plate. For example, I get my brows waxed and and my lip and my chin with all those chinny chin hairs. Uh, I'm sure everyone can relate. Yes. Uh, And this wonderful woman does it each time. And she was telling me about her Thanksgiving and she's like, oh yeah, you know, I was, I was cooking the entire time, cooking and like more cooking. And I was talking with her and I'm like, yeah, she's like, how was your sausages and mashed potatoes? Cause this is what we do for Thanksgiving. We like get, yeah, we get pre-made sausages. Oh, I forgot about and- that. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And my mom makes mashed potatoes and she came up and that was great. And we have sausages and potatoes, bangers and mash is what it's called. And I'm like, it was great. It was super easy. Like we weren't totally full. And she's like, yeah, I just had to cook all day. And I'm like, but yeah, I would cook all day. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, like we're just not into that. Like, and no one eats it. And she's like, yeah, no one eats it here either. And in my head, I'm like, why are you doing it? Like, why? There's no reason to put ourselves through all of these things for the sake of quote unquote tradition when no one even is like enjoying the tradition. Right. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. 100%. Like it's, it's getting set in those like little boxes of what we need to do. And we never have the chance to step out and be like, okay, what do we actually want to do? That's a question that I want you to ask yourself. What do I actually want to do? What is actually my priority in all of this? Is it to cook a bunch of food and feel unappreciated the whole day? Or is it to bring family together and have that time to connect and love and everything? Exactly. So we're going to give you some strategies about this and regarding time right after this break. This message is sponsored by Greenlight. It is so hard to raise kids who know how to manage money. Brie, right now, my kids are all about earning money for presents. My daughter wants to get presents for all of her friends, and my son is doing a secret Santa with his friends. Oh, I hear you. And if you're looking to raise kids that are financially responsible, we have got a lifesaver recommendation for you that you need to check out. It is Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app made for families that gives kids and teens an easy and fun way to gain financial literacy all while giving parents peace of mind. You can send instant money transfers, automate allowance, and even keep an eye on kids' spending with real-time notifications. Meanwhile, your kids can begin their journey towards financial autonomy by learning how to save, invest, and spend wisely. So sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash NGM. That's greenlight.com slash NGM to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash NGM. Hey all, Brie here, and I wanted to share one of my favorite gifts to give during the holiday season, a StoryWorth book. It is the most amazing gift ever. StoryWorth is an online service that lets you create a special and unique gift of someone's story. I've given StoryWorth books to both of my parents, and it has been their favorite gift, hands down. And did I mention it is so easy? StoryWorth emailed my parents questions every week that I handpicked from their massive list of questions that they have. All my parents had to do was open their email and answer them. That easy. I asked my dad questions like, did you have any rules that you set for yourself as a parent, which you immediately broke? And he did. I even asked both of my parents, are you more like your mom or your dad? And they shared a lot of really amazing qualities that I didn't know about my grandparents at the time. Then at the end of the year, StoryWorth compiles all of their answers, puts them into this gorgeous book that covers everything. My parents love showing us their books and I personally love getting a chance to read them. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love, a thoughtful and personal gift from the heart that preserves their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash NGM and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash NGM to save $10 on your first purchase. When we talk about overcommitment, a lot of the suggestions you hear out there are, oh, you just need to manage your time better. That's like Makes me so mad, Brie, whenever <laughs> that suggestion is given to women. You just need to manage my time back. Here's like, a new no, calendar. No. This calendar Here's will a help. new calendar. Yeah. Here's a new planner. Here, this will help you. Here's my daily routine. And here's what you should do each side of the day. It's just like, bleh. And we're not, and we're not saying that, you know, you can't find a new system. But a lot of times it's more than just your planner. It's a lot yeah. more than that. It's a lot more, especially when you're dealing with the day-to-day and like for you and me, we both struggle with ADHD. Yep. We both have shiny object syndrome. Yep. And it is incredibly hard to follow a daily routine without wanting to like jump out of your body and go running down the street. It's like the most crazy thing. And I'm going to add that having had the majority of my life the majority of my career life where I worked in an office setting and then now I'm doing an at-home thing. First of all, just to be clear, I love working at home. It gives me so much more flexibility. And it's great with the whole, like, I'm now no longer like supposed to be somewhere at eight o'clock and I'm leaving my house at 8.05, still trying to make it there by eight. So it helps a lot <laughs> with that. 
but <laughs> it is definitely hard to maintain that focus too in keeping those hard fed boundaries when you have things that kind of eke into it. Like, cause again, like from working from home, yeah. you constantly see all the other things that you could be doing because you're here. You do. <laughs> And you're stuck also if you work from home with all of the whole maintenance stuff oh, because that's what I'm talking like, about, right? My husband, he tries to take it over. He really does. And it's not his fault, but it comes down to like the logistics of things. He's like, I would schedule this, but I don't know when you're recording a podcast. I don't know when you're going to be busy. I don't know what's the best time for people to come over. And I'm like, yeah, you're totally right. That's kind of on me because I have the house as my workspace. Yeah. And that makes it incredibly hard. And when you do that, and when you work from home, it's easy to say yes to all the home related stuff, but yes to all the work related stuff. And then your brain feels like it's going to explode. Because it is. Because it is. It was <laughs> it evolutionary. Is. Like it, looking at evolution, it was not made to process that much shit at once. It was not. No. <laughs> So it's almost like you do need something outside your brain that you can refer to. Yes. And while I push back very hard against planners, I have to say using my digital calendar is like my lifesaver because it is the thing that shows me what I prioritize things as and what I was like, ooh, this was important that I really wanted to get done today. Oh, there it is right there. And then I have the choice to do it. Now, before with time blocking, and we saw this too with our balance members, we had people brain dump everything they had to do. Then they prioritized it based on what was an A task, a B task, a C task, a D task. And it was always hard to figure out, well, what's an A task, something that aligns with your goals versus a B task, something that needs to be done, but doesn't necessarily align with your bigger goals. And how do you categorize that? And then once you put it on your calendar, there comes the problem, especially like when I went through this, I didn't want to do it. It was like the calendar telling me what to do. And I'm like, no, I don't have the energy to do that right now. Or, oh my gosh, my child just is homesick from school and is asking me like every 20 minutes to get him something. Like I can't, I can't have that on my calendar. And I think that's what a lot of moms get into. I would say with time blocking. It can be. Yeah. I mean, I think with me, a lot of the problems that I have with scheduling things, like they, first of all, like anything else, it's shiny and it's new and it works for a little while. And I will say there is something to be said for shiny and new, especially if your brain works where it likes the shiny objects. Like there's something to be said yes. about that. Both of ours does. Yes. Yeah. It likes the shiny objects and it's like, it absolutely loves it. So you try it for a little while and it, and it works for a little while. But I think there's also something to be said for procrastination because a lot of times hmm. those goals we have for ourselves, they're not easy goals. They're things that are going to take work. They're going to take changing things around. Once we get step one done, then there's still step two through 60. So mm -hmm. with me, sometimes it's not so much of like, I don't want the calendar to tell me what to do. It's that my body defaults to procrastination. And oh, yeah. If there is space, tell, yeah. it's going to take it. It's going to be like, well, I know I put this on here, but technically it's not due till Thursday <laughs> at noon. So if I started on Thursday at 11, I'll be fine. I can keep pushing yeah. off till Thursday at 11 and then it'll be, you know, great. Yeah. Like, it's ignore the fact that I have a doctor's appointment at that day and time. That sounds like a Thursday problem. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And I think like I would definitely do that as well, which is why I love what we found now and what we're using is called rainbow time blocking, where your tasks and stuff aren't necessarily prioritized due to like your goals. They're prioritized based on what you can put off and what you can move easily. Uh, because it still goes through the same process, still brain dump everything, still categorize it. But now instead, like it starts with red where you have your A tasks, which are your appointments. Those are things with other people that you can't move easily. Right. Like it really takes some coordination to move it. Probably better off keeping that one and not having to move it. Well, that keeps <laughs> your brain from doing the whole, that's a Thursday problem. That's a Thursday problem, yeah. Like, to the ability to look at it and be like, oh, no, that can't be a Thursday problem because then that affects X, Y, Z. Yeah. B tasks are bottlenecks and I make those pink. And those tell me, hey, if you don't do this task, it's going to hold up someone else from doing their task or it's oh. going to hold up something you want down the road. 
it's a bottleneck. So that's helped me get things done really well. Because here at No Guilt Mom, I write the newsletter copy, which is just like, the little hello you get from me in the newsletter and the story right there. But then Brie comes in and puts in images and then Christina comes in and formats it and copy edits it to make sure like we don't have horrible typos as well as putting things that need to be done. If I don't write that, yeah, that puts everybody else off and puts more work on me. So that's a bottleneck task. And that's a pink task on my calendar. And that really helps me get it done when I see that pink. Oh, and I think that that works like in so many ways, because that can also be house stuff too, like things in your family. Like if I don't do, for instance, at that bottleneck that happens to us every year, and you think I would learn mm -hmm. is the, um, shoot, I'm like, the words are escaping my brain at this moment. Um, physicals. Because my son has to get a physical oh. before he starts band camp. Band camp is always the same day. It's always July 5th, always when it starts. But if I don't schedule the physical, then we don't get the appointment in time. And then he yeah. doesn't get his form signed. And then he can't participate in band camp. Now, granted, some would argue that my son is in high school. He is perfectly capable of calling and making his own doctor's appointment. And I hear that. And that is definitely something that is happening this coming year. Somebody's got to take on yes. a little bit more because mom keeps it forgetting. Takes a while. But, it takes a while. But that's totally. a, that's a great example, I think, though, of a bottleneck. Like, Because if I keep putting off calling the doctor's office because I hate making phone calls because I'm part of that generation of like, can I just email or sign up online? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then that affects everybody else. It, it slows everybody else down. So, yeah. Yeah. And we have three more categories in the rainbow time blocking process. And I have an Instagram reel on it, which we will put in the show notes if you want to learn more about rainbow time blocking. And it's something that we take all of our balance members through. So they get very, very proficient at it, the more they progress through the program. It's really awesome. Highly recommend. And I'm not like fighting my calendar anymore. It helps take off all that stress. A lot of the it stress does. of it all being on your shoulders because there's a plan. Yes. There's a plan. There's a plan and there's also a, hey, is this really feasible for one person to do? Exactly. When you have to put it on the calendar, you're like, oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like I have to do three things at the same time if we want that to happen. Right. It helps you recognize where you could use support because that's going to kind of lead us into our next section of having the, the healthy boundaries. <laughs> The healthy boundaries and boundaries are a hard one. And we're going to give you some tips right after this break. My son is playing a game right now on his computer where he's a thief and the cops are after him. So I'm so excited about this new app, Give As We Grow, where instead of being the quote unquote bad guys, kids are practicing giving back. That is so cool, Joanne. I really wish that there was something like this when my kids were younger that got them excited about giving back to others and helped them build a better understanding of what it really means to volunteer. Give As We Grow is the first of its kind free educational mobile app for children ages 8 to 11 that teaches kids via fun, service-focused minigame quests to tap into their unique talents and interests to help others. And did you know that studies show that there is a biological connection between generosity and happiness and that volunteering improves people's physical and mental health? I mean, kids who volunteer typically do better in school and are less likely to engage in risky behaviors. And that is something that I think we all want for our kids. Ready to spark a new movement in generosity? Find and download Give As We Grow for free in the App Store for Android and iOS. And for resources for the whole family, visit giveaswegrow.org. We're hitting that time of year where my brain gets so overloaded in December that I look for anything to make life easier. And I have to say, Brie, that Green Chef is one of those services. Yes. Green Chef is there to take away the dreaded, oh my goodness, what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? You can eat clean all holiday long with over 80 weekly meal options each week featuring things like quick and easy, protein packed, calorie smart, or my personal favorite, the keto options. And you don't have to lose track of healthy eating habits during the holidays because every Green Chef customer gets a free session with one of their registered dietitians who can walk 
walk you through how to make clean eating work for you, which is very cool. And I have to say that I have been loving their recipes lately. They put things together I have never thought of. This week, we're trying the lemon basil caper pork with sauteed cauliflower, bell peppers, almonds, and feta cheese, my favorite. Their recipes make it so easy to support my wellness goals without skipping on flavor. For Green Chef's best deal of the year, get $250 off with code NGM250 at greenchef.com slash NGM250. That's greenchef.com slash NGM250. And don't forget to use that code NGM250 to get $250 off. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. So one of the big things when we overcommit ourselves is that we say yes to so much stuff. And we say yes a lot out of a sense of obligation. Like, oh, I should do that Mm -hmm. to be a good mom. Or I should do that to make the holiday special for my children. Like all of these things going through our heads. And we say yes, and then we regret it. (laughs) Yeah, like the whole... I'm really torn on those. uh, And I've seen a lot of posts of these lately because we're getting into the holidays. Remember, you only get 18 Halloweens and you only get 18 Christmases. And then like as they're getting older, in my case, I only have, if we're going to go to 18, I only have two more Christmases. And I get that. Yes. In terms of like kind of giving yourself the perspective that it only happens so many times. But at the same time, When you are stressed, that guilt does not help. That just guilts you into having to say yes to everything again. It does. And also, like, I think those 18 Halloweens and 18 Christmas posts are based on a very limited view of parenting and a very short-term view. Because this was brought up for me, actually, by my sister-in-law, where we were talking about parenting. And she was talking about her aunt and uncle and her, like, her uncle's now relationship with his kids. And she's like, they raised these kids in a way that they were helping these kids. They were partners with these kids. They listened. They weren't authoritarian. They were more like on their side and guiding them along the way. And now she sees her cousins have this great adult relationship where they actually want to spend time with him. They want to be around him. And that is really the parenting style that we teach here at No Guilt Mom. We're not doing like an 18 and you're gone. We're making this long-term relationship with our kids where they do want to be around us in the future and they do come to us and they do see us. So in that sense, there are not 18 Christmases left, right? There is like a maximum number because you're building a long-term relationship with your kids. Yes. Like a matter of fact, one of our guests, Ned, Ned Johnson, has been on the podcast a couple of times. He did say that. I think it was in his first episode. So I'll have to add a link to that here in the show notes where he mentioned that a lot of us look at it as our parenting where our child is under our care, which is typically 18 years. We look at it as that is our time with our kids. But if you think about it, that's such a small sliver of their life. Like they have, yeah, they have so much more time that they're not under our direct care in their life. And it, it, he just talked about how like, you need to think about that when you're having a relationship with your kids. Like, do you want it to be, it's my way or the highway. We do it this way, no matter what. Because that's going to more than likely make your child be like, yeah, I really don't feel like I really, yeah, peace peace out. out. (laughs) Rather than them wanting, like the example you just gave about your sister-in-law's aunt and uncle that like they don't have that bond that they could have. So yeah, they have, so they have a bond and that's like really what we're going for. So when you see that, you'll be like, oh my gosh, there are only two more Christmases left where I have to plan everything. And then they're going to start planning stuff. And then I just get to attend. That's (laughs) awesome. (laughs) <laughs> but, I also, How awesome is that? but I also don't have to take it all on and I don't have to make yeah. every like honestly like I because you you know this and we've talked about it on the podcast and I promise I'll make this little detour very short <laughs> but because we have great advice for you here but in my case having two kids in high school one of them's a junior I am definitely starting to feel the crunch of they're going to be gone soon and I want to make everything, this great, memorable experience. I want everything to be a Hallmark card at this point going forward Oh, because I'm like, I've got limited time. But at the same time, I have to hear where my kids are coming from. And like, honestly, my oldest, the one that's making me feel like the Hallmark clock is like ticking down. Ticking, yeah. He's stressed. He has a lot on his schedule being a junior, all of his honors classes that he's choosing to take, no matter how many times I've told him, like, you don't need to take all AP and honors. That's what he wants to do. 
he has a lot going on and he's like, as much as I would love to do stuff like all the time, sometimes mom, I just want to be able to relax and just chill out at all. And I'm like, okay, so yeah. So maybe we won't be going to this winter wonderland thing together as a family because the boy needs to rest. So, and the boy has boundaries. Can we say that? (laughs) He's doing a really great job at that because he doesn't want to overcommit himself. Is he saying saying no? no? (laughs) Yes. And it's a great, great thing. He does not have it in him where he has to say yes to everybody to preserve their feelings. He's like, I really need this for myself. And you see that you're like, of course you need this for yourself. So it's really turning that now on us being like, okay, if other people get to request that, so do we we. that as well. Yes. Yes. Here's the thing though. When you set a boundary, when you say no to something, you're going to want to a walk it back. (laughs) <laughs> that's going to be a tendency because it's hard and when people aren't happy with you. It's hard having people unhappy with you and B people are going to push against the boundary. They are going to so push. So you really need to have a game plan of what you're going to do because a boundary isn't about what other people do. A boundary is about what you do when the request or the action happens. So let's go into this whole thing about wanting to walk it back. Because Brie, you talk about this with Miguel. Oh, okay. Yes. I I wasn't sure we were going on that one. All right. So yes. All right. So here's an example of walking it back in my house that I I am working on. And, you know, hands up in podcast land if you've ever caught yourself doing this as well. So I am, I've, I am stressed out lately. Dinner for the last couple of months has been just my hell. It has been hell. Because normally I'm the one that does the meal planning because I know what everybody's going to eat. I, I, again, taking on that mental load of knowing what everybody wants to eat. And so it's gotten to the point where I basically was like, hey, I need you to start taking over dinner for me because it's just, it's killing me. It's far too much. I can't do it. I'm really stressed out. And so he has set nights that he cooks, but then my request came in and he's like, all right, tell you what, next week, I've got a light week. I'll do dinner every night. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like... Oh, I was like, heaven oh, yeah. sounded amazing, right? And yeah. Then the first night comes along and he's like, so what do you think you want for dinner? And then I'm like frustrated because I'm like, oh, I wanted you to take on like all of it. So like, yeah, decision so, making, right? everything. So then what could have been a simple answer of, I really don't have the mental capacity to even decide on dinner. Can you just decide? Or mm-hmm. me coming in, like, you know what we have and like giving a suggestion and walking away were two options that would have been perfectly fine. But no, Brie walked it back. Brie went into the kitchen, begrudgingly like opened up the fridge, found some stuff and was like, okay, I guess we'll make this. Next thing you know, I'm chopping, I'm cooking. I'm di- And he's over there going, you know, um, you asked me to help you with dinner. I'm here. I'm trying to help you with dinner. I'm trying to cook it, but yet you're right there cooking dinner. And yeah, so <laughs> it happens. Yeah, like so. What I so the moral of the story, ladies, is do not step in. Like once you have set that boundary, you can hold that boundary. Like a, a lot of us self sabotage it. We don't even realize we're doing it mm-hmm. because we stepped in because they weren't doing it the way that we were expecting it to be done in our in our head. That's a big big thing because we hear a lot about you know you, I can't delegate to my family because they won't do it the right way. And it's really re-examining the, is my way the, the only right way. way? Is it the only or way? Is, <laughs> is it the only way? Or is there other ways we can get this accomplished where it would, you know, serve the same purpose and reach the same goal, but just have a different way around it? So yeah, that is, that's one way too. Like the walking it back, make sure like you're really, really looking for that. It won't be perfect at first. You're right. going to walk it back. I've walked it back before many times and had my husband come in and be like, I thought this was my yeah. job. And I'm like, you're right. The point it is, was your job. right. The point is, is that we all do it. It's about being mm-hmm. aware that you're doing it and being able to go, oh, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go do something else right now. I, bye. Yeah, it's like, I see <laughs> that. I see that. So the B is knowing what to do when the other person pushes back. Like they will push back, especially your kids. And you feel horrible. They will bring out everything in their arsenal of tricks to get you to do the thing they want to do. One of the things that goes on a lot in my house recently, especially with the holidays, is decorating. I am not a decorating fan. I really appreciate a well-decorated space and I love it. But 
all of the prep and everything going into that and buying all the things, it's just like my brain does not enjoy it at all. I hate, I, I would say I hate it, making all those decisions. My daughter loves it loves it so much so that Brie has co-opted her to help decorate for her party. Yes. Like she loves it. Take on the mental load, please. Yeah. So my daughter is always asking me, she's like, when can we go to Target to get holiday stuff? And I'm like, I, what else do we need here? Like, why are we buying more stuff? And she will push back with so much. And once I said to her, I'm like, I don't like shopping. And so she immediately came back with, you don't like anything. And I'm like, ouch. Okay. Like, and that's where I was like, okay, we're going to stop this conversation right now because that hurt. And I walked away before I said anything else, but just know that they're going to push. They're going to push and that's in there, you know, that that's what they do and just know what you're going to do. A great thing to do is when you're hurt, own it, say you're hurt, walk away from the situation and then you can bring it back up another time. Well, that brings Um, up a fantastic point. Like it's mm-hmm. hard to have a good, honest, productive conversation about your boundaries when you're mad. Mm-hmm. That's not mm-hmm. the time. No, no, no. Because that's when like hurt things get said and it we bring is. up everything. Yeah. That's it. That's the kids that bring it up. And it's us as adults that bring it up. So I love that point. Like don't, when you're upset, step away. Yeah. So like you can even use this phrase. I learned this phrase really helps me. I even use the hand motions with it. I just put like the stop signs in front. I'm like, stop right there. That hurt. And then I leave. And that's all I say. Like, I don't go into it anymore. I just stop the conversation right there. Cause I was pissed at that one. <laughs> well, I would be too. And I, and, but I love that because it's very simple and it's to the point. You're not adding extra, mm-hmm. like you're not adding 15 bazillion reasons why it hurt you, which you You could, but in the moment when emotions are high, we're not really processing a lot of language, either parties. And so, and I feel like it wouldn't even be listened to. Like they wouldn't hear it in that moment because she said that because she was hurt that I wouldn't go holiday shopping. Yeah. That I said I didn't like it. And that's why she says her comment. She didn't mean anything against it. It was a hurt comment coming from her. Well, the simplicity of that reminds me of my other phase that if you are other phase, other phrase, you probably have heard me talk about on the podcast. I like to use, and we got, and I got this one from Dodie Bloomberg, who was also on the podcast. One of our like first five episodes, we had Dodie uh, here for positive discipline, but I love you. And no, like I have to use that one a lot with my daughter because she's the one who yeah, I don't think we can do that. But why not? But why? Mommy, I love you. Can't we? And this is from a, a almost 16 year old. <laughs> she knows mm-hmm. how to. Eh. And I'll just be like, I love you. And no, I love you. And no, because I can't. I've already said no. And it doesn't mean I don't love you. But it's just nope. there's no more. We're not going to no. have this whole I'm not going to give you a million reasons why. You have your game plan for what you're doing Mm -hmm. when the boundary is pushed against. Yep. And that's all we can do. So as we get into this holiday season, we're in the middle of it right now. And you're going, you're going for it for the next like two or three weeks. You still have a lot. Practice these strategies, see how they work for you. And for all inspiration for you every Monday morning, go to balanceformoms.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You get it when you get that like free task calculator right there on the front page. And we give you more of this great stuff because it really takes like Zig Ziglar, actually. It's a great quote. People say like they get unmotivated Mm -hmm. and it's like motivation doesn't last. Neither does bathing. That's why you have to do it every day. Oh, I like that. (laughs) That's that's why you need to have that constant motivation and why we're so happy you're here at the No Guilt Mom podcast, where we hope we remind you of it twice a week. So for now, remember the best mom's a happy mom. Take care of you. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by. Are you looking for something to listen to with your whole family? Then check out Six Minutes, produced and created by Gen Z Media. With over 200 twisty, cliffhanger-filled episodes, Six Minutes tells the story of 11-year-old Holiday who is pulled from the icy waters with no memory of who she is or where she came from. 
Three years ago, Brindley Pasternak helped the Anders family uncover the truth about Holiday's past. Now she'll need them to help her find the truth about hers. In Six Minutes Out of Time, the long-awaited sequel, Cyrus Anders is found unconscious near the mysterious Elixir Academy in Florida, and Brindley learns the school may have a shocking connection to her missing mother. Dive in now and get the most downloaded family audio adventure in history. Follow Six Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free with the GZM family subscription.